Hello everybody and welcome to the third uh, drawing class for the mythical creatures and fantasy stuff. So one of the most requested things, unfortunately we didn't get to finish voting on it, uh, was involving feathers, wings, um, accessory type things like horns, multiple eyes, so on and so on. So um, I guess we're going to be focusing a little bit more on that since that's what the majority seem to really want to get into. Uh, the second most interesting thing was body definition, more about the body structure. Um, I wanted to talk to the people at TAF and see what they say about me uh, doing a specific set of videos just on that, because that is a whole subject, like, in of itself. Um, like you could do a video on just the head, you could do a video on just... Um, the the torso you can do a couple videos on the torso uh you can do just one video on arms one video on legs hands feet and you can probably do two on hands um so that i'm gonna actually talk to the uh, people at TAF and see about what we can do about that um but so uh with that in mind we're gonna be instead doing feathers wings structures horns and the like and so it's not going to be necessarily any completed piece uh, of work necessarily. This is just sketching, drawing, getting ideas out, and studying a lot of what, you know, real creatures with feathers and wings uh, are like. So when you're doing fantasy creatures and whatnot, like I've said before, a lot of it is based in reality. So in reality, as far as wings go and wing structures go, uh, you pretty much have bats and birds. Now, birds have a variety of wing structures, um, and the, those wing structures do a variety of things. Let me see here. You have wings that are probably shaped a little bit more rounded overall. And this is pretty much how I end up starting my wings. I start with this, this triangular shape. That's probably a little far down, so I'll bring that up here a little bit. And then the wing is a little bit more shaped like so. A lot of your birds that are, have this kind of wing set, there, there are a lot of them are smaller, your robins, your cardinals, your chickadees, and different things like that. Just this more rounded shape. Um, then your neck shape, you got it a little bit longer. Uh, this shape has, let's call them fingers, they're primary feathers and secondary feathers. But if we think of uh, wings like arms and hands, the feathers in this case would be fingers. You got one little finger up here that's more or less the thumb, and then you got the rest of the primary feathers that come down. Obviously, there's more primary feathers than there are fingers. But they got this nice swoop round. Like so. So probably just think of them more as, you know, stubby little fingers, shorter arms. Here are the secondary feathers. And depending on what bird it is you're drawing depends on, will tell you a lot about how many secondary, how many primaries, and, and whatnot. And if you're trying to figure it out for a mythical creature, it's up to you. But in order to have something that looks realistic, uh, you're going to want to base it off of something in reality. Now there's a second mantle of feathers that also is divided into primary and secondary. They kind of pretty much cover up, you know, go most of the way up to here on the wing. And then here are the secondaries again. And again, these are also a little bit shorter, like so. And then you have a nether layer of feathers. Normally people just represent them as these little short, fluffy. Little area like this, but even this area is divided up into a primary and secondary set, which once again, more or less starts about here. Here's the first set. 
And then the secondary set kind of overlaps over the top just a little bit. Like so. Now it ends up all looking pretty much the same and that's pretty true unless you were physically have a wing right in front of you. Let's say the entire page is just a bird's wing. Then that's when you really want to worry about details and the feathers being perfectly shaped and uh, seeing, looking up the difference between the secondary topmost feathers versus the uh, primary area of top feathers. Because the primary top area of feathers, that's pr those are very small and very fine. And then the secondary area of those top feathers a little bit bigger, not quite as fine. But from a distance, you really more than likely can't tell. So we got this shorter wing here than we have. Let me look here. Ah. So... So these wings here are more or less meant for speed and short burst. Uh, your smaller birds that, you know, they're just trying to get away as quickly as possible. That's when they really need to get going uh, is pretty much what you got here. And even here, the secondary versus the um, primary feathers, probably even not as extreme as what I just showed. But you can still see there is a dip between the first and the secondary. Nice big chunky wing. Uh, short burst flights. And these are pretty good things to know. Is it, when it comes to giving your creatures wings and different accessory items. I believe uh, one of the people said it was phrased it as quarks. Um, yeah, that's a good way of putting it too. I always called it accessories. Um, but it's also good to know what these additions that you're adding to your mythical creatures what they mean because you'll even notice uh for uh, fish fins fish fins a lot of different kinds of fish have a lot of differently shaped fins and tail fins and things like that for different reasons and for different purposes so that's always really good information when you're creating a creature of your own uh to go off of why do they need this what is their lifestyle like do they need to be able to get away really fast and so on so on so the next wing we're going to go over is a passive soaring wing. So like your vultures, uh, birds that just, you know, that you see them just hang in the air and they don't flap. They just kind of sit there and glide like a kite. Now they don't quite have the triangular set, but it is a little tiny hump area and they have a longer wing overall. See, I'll move that back because I did not give myself enough space. All right, so there is our passive wing shape roughly. Um, and how the feathers lay are important. Uh, like I said, for instance, normally I think of this shorter top feather like a thumb. And this wing style does have that thumb, more or less. But each and every feather does have a name and a targeted place where it is supposed to go in the wing. And I always find the finger area, these, these primary feathers, to really be the descriptive and important part of uh, the wing itself. A lot of the other feathers, they are obviously very important for flight, but as far as a, from a visual standpoint, to convey information, uh, I find the, uh, the primary feathers a little bit more important for that. 
Now, at least the, the ones that feel more like fingers. So there's the finger part of this wing. And then they start rounding out and filling in areas. And you can see, really, I do a lot of my feathers the exact same way. It's one long stem and then a hook, more or less. Think of it as just drawing a very basic knife. All right, and that is where all the primary feathers are. Now we got the secondaries. And that is a lot of a matter of, once again, filling in your spots. Now these wings can also, when you're observing them, and I'm just gonna sketch in roughly where the three wing sets are. With this passive soaring one, this second layer of feathers comes down quite a bit further. Where over here was a little bit more uniform up until like basically here's where the body is. It's uniform until this feather and then you got like these these guys more or less coming upwards. Very uniform, very short and they're just doing their own thing. Now with these passive soaring guys this part of the wing is very similar proportion wise to our short burst wing here but over here the secondaries of this bunch come a lot closer to the bottom here, so. Now, actually, these look like they're a little bit smaller. And they get a little bigger as they go. They stay pretty vertical on this wing. And there we are. Then you got your secondary areas. Here, and then you got these tertiary set, which again, this turns out being a little bit different. This area is a whole lot longer and pointier where this one kind of came down a little bit more on this wing. This one's a lot more up. And there, and then we got another set, which is really more where the arm is, uh, where the bones and everything are, you know, all nicely attached very, more or less. And you see we got these different sets going on in different layers. Let's see here. And then it's just a bunch of the same as before. Now, over here for this thumb, it actually comes up over here. Now, the chart I'm using isn't exactly telling me what birds these wings are coming from. Again, every bird is going to have a completely different structure, but the overall shape of it is what the important thing is here. Now these are actually quite a bit more pointed. And then you can have feathers that maybe end up overlapping like this with another set. That adds a little bit more character. Uh, you don't always want everything to be perfectly uniform, otherwise it just doesn't feel real. Sometimes feathers get ruffled. And these feathers over here seem to be more like fat little daggers. And they do kind of lean slightly back this direction. And then it's just more of the same. So I'm just gonna kind of vaguely do this quickly. I'm not gonna try for details or anything. Now there's a secondary set, the closer in this area, where the feathers, they're, they're all still the same size and they're all still the same shape. They're just a little bit smaller, but they start doubling up the fill in areas so that way there's not gaps in the, the feathers. And then we have Poofy. You can just do some shorthand here. And over here, we have some pretty uniform, wide bladed looking uh, feathers. Now 
And there we go. Now we have a, whoop, that's a B, not a P. Passive soaring. Now our next wing shape is more like your hummingbirds. This is high speed wings. And it is just this long blade knife shape. I'm kind of thinking like a little fold out knife. But like a lot of the other wings that I have shown you, there's usually a divot area. And the divot area is back here and it's very subtle, little divot area. And that divot area is normally the separation area between the primary and the secondary feathers. Now it's very hard to tell the divot area in the uh, passive soaring, but it's about right in here because this is where the secondary started. This is where uh, the primary feathers are, secondary. Same thing happened here. This is where the secondaries, whoops, that's probably actually off the secondaries, primaries, divot. And instead of filling out this whole area, I'm just going to mark off where the secondary and primaries are. Now this wing, I will at least do uh, the primaries because they are quite a bit different. There are no fingers with the high speed wing. The thumb, as I was calling it, which is these short guys on top here, that's actually the longest or just slightly shorter than the uh, the other feather that was underneath it. And they're not nearly as pointed as they were before. We got a lot more surface area for these kinds of feathers. So think of this more like a ceiling fan kind of a situation. And then they get shorter and shorter as they go back. But believe it or not, all those feathers are the primaries for the high speed guy. And then from there, we have our secondaries, which are over here. And then our next layer, our next layer of primaries. I only know primary and secondaries for the bottom layer. I don't know what the other layers names are. So I'm just kind of vaguely hinting at them. But for the second layer, the primary feathers on that layer, they come down just a little bit more, like so. And then you got your secondaries for that next layer, and it goes over quite a bit of our primaries right here. And then our next, our third layer, and it needs to be a little thicker than that be about in here and then that next layer is round up in here for the primaries so we can start seeing how these wings are structured completely differently from each other last one is active soaring Active soaring is more like your albatrosses, your geese. They are constantly flapping, but they are designed uh, for long, longer distances. Um, yeah. So migratory birds. And this one's a little bit strange. So, and this is the biggest and longest set of all the feathers. 
come out of the shoulder. Now we just take up the whole page instead. How about we do that? And there's that top of that triangle again, that little hump, which is practically non-existent on the high speed guy, but it does exist in the other two to some degree. And up into the shoulder. All right. And maybe I don't want to give it quite that much hump, but flatten that curve out a little bit. Now you guys are seeing me sketch as opposed to working from a finished piece to make sure I'm done on time. Uh, when we're sketching around, you can see I'm erasing a lot, I'm fixing, I'm moving things all over the place. Now our next wings, you got your primaries down here, or your, uh, yeah, primaries. Primary guys are down here. Here's a second layer. Now they have a pretty big uh, third layer of primary. Seems to cover a lot more space than any of the other wing types. And again, we've hit this hump area, so then now we know where all the primaries are and all their levels are. Over here, we got our secondaries, and our secondaries, the second level, there's barely any of the first level there when it comes to that. And then our third level is a lot of the exact same. Looks like I needed to draw this down here a little bit more. It's just ever so slightly more of that third level. And as far as our second level goes, it's pretty much the same, almost the same, as the uh, first layer. And then the fourth layer of all those little, little teeny tiny feathers on top of the wing that make the wing more or less roundish right there. Yeah. Now a lot of our secondary feathers are very upright. Where our primary feathers, they, they are the ones that are stretching. And here again, we don't have much in the way of finger, of a finger look, like we do with the first two. Again, it's a lot smoother for that main set of primaries, the actual primary feathers. And they are a lot smoother on the bottom as far as like having very little gap space in between, like how we have the gap spaces here. And we have a little bit of a gap space like in here. Barely any at all for these guys. But they do stay pointed. And there are some places where we get a little bit of a gap every once in a while. Maybe no more than two gaps. And not counting like basically what I'm calling the thumb feather. There's always been a gap right there in that space. But probably if you're going to make your bird or dinosaur or whatever it is that you're doing, if you're going to you know, make it look different, make it look like an actual living thing. For instance, cats aren't always perfectly groomed. Sometimes they have a cow lick, you know, a little piece of hair that just sticks up somewhere. Uh, you're going to get variations like that. And maybe no more than two variations throughout the entire wing if you're going to do that for something that's an active sore. And as the primaries go back, the more and more they start standing straight up and the shorter and shorter the feathers keep getting. Like so. And then your primaries are pretty much exactly the same as we've done up above over and over and over again. Now, when it comes to individual wings, believe it or not, uh, every wing 
and every bird has completely different shaped feathers. So if there's a specific look you're going for, I highly recommend you go and look up, uh, especially in Indiana, we have the DNR and they photograph birds' wings and birds' feathers and they put them on this really cool graph so that way you can see the exact shape of any feather and anywhere it is on the bird. Because when we get down, really down to the nitty gritty of feathers, this, what I've been calling the thumb, is primary 10. Uh, and then primary 9, primary 8, primary 7. And each one of these will have a completely different shape. And it may not look like when it is a wing and it's all together, even open, it may not look like there is a difference, much difference in shape uh, from here. But if you were to take this feather out of this bird, where let's say, uh, we'll do this top guy here. Let's go with a primary 10. Let's say that that feather looks like exactly what we think it looks like. There's the stalk of it, the quill. It looks pretty generic. Now let's say we pull out primary seven. Yeah, it, it, it does the same point thing, and this is really all we see of primary seven. But then it does this really weird thing where then, where it is underneath uh, the feather behind it, where it literally comes out. And then the top part of the feather becomes narrower. Like so. Hard to teach you all, uh, all the ways that feathers can actually look, because like this is a flicker and if you don't know what a flicker is it's basically a soft build uh, woodpecker and they have feathers like this it's a lot more actually square than that it has very strict rigid lines to go with it uh, and I've seen feathers where they swoop in on the top and I've seen feathers where they are narrower on one side and bigger on another. Every feather has its own place, especially when it comes to these outer ones, the primary and the secondaries. And the secondaries are named just like the primaries are. S1, uh, S2. I don't know why P10 is up here, but S1, you know, it's a little strange. S1 and P1 are right by each other, and then they go in opposite direction. But, you yeah, know, the way things are. So it's going to be very, it would be very hard for me to go through every bird in existence to show you every possible shape of feather that there is that you can do. Um, the, like I said, the DNR is uh, D-N-R, aha, just in case you can't understand what I'm saying, is a great resource uh, for feather types. And as far as making them look more fantasy or not, I mean, there again, that's just a matter of looking up and seeing what other birds, exotic birds have, uh, how other exotic birds look. Um, and it, even if you're not doing a bird, you're just doing a animal with feathers. Look at all the other things that are out there in reality and then pick and choose and put in what you want. Uh, when it comes to the actual wings though, you are going to want to do something that makes sense for the animal. And let's see here. Oh, well, this don't work. All right. Now, underneath all of these wings, we do have a bone structure of some sort happening. And honestly, bone structures, that's another thing. Learning the anatomy of different kinds of wings. That is also very important for when you're doing fantasy work. So here is the, basically the shoulder, the ball and socket joint for this type of wing. And these are the bones that I'm kind of sketching in. That's a little bit far. Uh, Should have stayed back here in the uh, second layer, but... This is roughly where the bones are for our speedy bird. 
our next bird, even though you think that the shoulder would be up here, it's actually not, it's actually down here. And I want to stay in this layer. We got a little thumb there. And then I want to stay up in this area. And there's where the bones are for the passive. Now for our high speed guy, he has a little short arm bone here. And it all stays up in the third layer. Which honestly, this is more how I thought bird wings, where the bones were in all the birds, would be. But you see, they come down quite a bit in some. Now for this guy. His shoulder actually starts way back here for these active sores. Comes all the way down here. Comes all the way up over here. And then just beep, beep. And there's your active sore. And this is where the bones are for everything, more or less. A vague approximation for trying to go fast and covering uh, as much as you guys wanted me to kind of cover for this video. So this is wh where we are with feathers. 